So again, hello everyone. <clears throat> uh, my name is Sanjay Matika, and the name of my topic or my speech for today is quite misleading because I would like not to talk only about backends, but as well for, uh, about frontends and uh, applications. But I call it like that because I will like mostly describe the services we use or we develop here in Blueberry for the last one and a half year. Uh, a little bit about me, I'm a former QA here in Blueberry. Then Sorry, <laughs> but we have some technical issues. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, again, well, I can speak without the, the image. I'm a former QA here in Blueberry, I was a former QA in Blueberry. And then I switched to position front-end developer, for, but mostly in, like in the last I don't know, 10 months, I'm mostly doing backends, which is like quite fun. So I can speak a little bit about backends, but uh, from some reason, I was picked up to speak about all of the internal stuff and to bring you some more descriptive insight into it. Well, thank you, Ishii. Welcome. So, uh, I have some general intro. intro. I have like the, the speech about the Blueberry IO backend, which was the first like unintentional intro project. Then we switched to the vending machine, which you can see there in the in the foyer. And, <laughs> and some overview or summary of, of our approaches, of our our like trials, our our issues, our whatever. Uh, Let's move to some introduction. How did it start? Like in early 2017, we had the Bluebird IO web, which turned out that it's not web anymore, but it's it started growing into something which we can call web application. So there was a need to create a backend for it. And it has some of the features of the internal projects. That's why I'm talking about it, because we had a possibility to choose a technology, to choose an approach, to to come up with something we are interested in, to come up with something we want to try. And we, like, for, it was quite a simple task, but we wanted to try something which we are not generally doing on client projects. And we have some presumptions, we have some, like, thoughts that we were fascinated by by functional languages. We know that the learning curve is a very important thing there, so we want to go with something which is not way too academic. I'm, I'm really sorry, Haskell. Uh, we want something which is maintainable, fault-tolerant, which is like, uh, you know, dynamic, and it has great performance. It's not it's no JS, it's something like different and we just everything out of the box. And uh, maybe most of you know where I'm leading to. Uh, it wasn't like that someone like someone was passing by with some, some <laughs> elixir <laughs> wanna try. But yeah, there was quite hype around the elixir at that time. So we wanted to try it because, you know, it was something new, uh, not that new, it was, it was last year, like, it wasn't that new, it was for years old. But yeah, we decided to use that approach. So let's speak more about our first unintentional Blueberry internal project. Uh, it's all written with Alexio Phoenix framework. It has classic MVC pattern, our contours, views, models, and in the beginning, it was quite simple. It was just storing of the users and their data. data. And but it was simple, but we have learned how OTP works, how to test our code with XUnit, how, how all the controls are connected together, and how we use all the amnesia, active stuff. And like we learn a lot on it. And after we set up this, like, quite simple backend working with our front end, which is in React. Uh, we have, like, it was the time when, when Yuri came into the leading of the internal projects. And we have, like, our first, like, very first internal project, 
with all the features uh, usually talk about. It was learning driven, but it has some like additional value in, in making our lives easier. But not, not exactly our, but our HR uh, HR department like make their lives easier. Because if someone new came in Blueberry, you need to you know about his team or her team about the things which are common here in Blueberry, how we do stuff. And like the task for Team Chi Chi was, hey, we want some easy application. You just click your team members and every other staff will be there. And you just print it on, on, on your printer. So we created a small, small service written again with the Alexi Phoenix uh, framework, uh, which we're doing that. And it could be the part of the Peruber backend, but we decided to make it as a small service and just connect it to, to our backend. So it consumes data from Peruber, IO backend, consumes users, and making groups of them and just printing some, some stuff that somewhere. But it was like the first touch of, of someone who were not experienced with X here, with someone who were not uh, experienced with other stuff. We used so GraphQL there. Uh, and like some team was dedicated to do it, some team which wanted to do it. So yeah, it was like in the time it was well, like almost precisely a year ago. It was it was like wow. And then starts the problem: how we can integrate other sub application in our Blueberry our backend? Because Team Chichi was like the first one, the first first microservice, and we need to integrate it. So all the other microservices can communicate it together and like together with the Blueberry IO backend. So we have implemented something which is pretty straightforward. We call it BB push messages. And it's just you have some function which you which you chain to, to any act, type of action or any type of event like user removal, user data change, or something like that. And every time this, this function is called or this, this event is happened. It triggered and dispatched uh, some other function, which sends the message to the app which is registered in the Blueberry IO event uh, backend, and which has a receiver for this message. So, in the terms of the team cheat sheet, you have like because we don't fetch users every time, we have some some prefetched users on the team cheat sheet backend, so we split, uh, like save time uh, and capacity. So every time something is changed in the use in terms of user on Blueberry our backend, it dispatched the, the, the message, hey, the user was removed. And the team Chichi backend received the message and okay, I know about it. I can remove the user from my own database as well, or I can refresh the data, send the users again. So we now have the mechanism how to add as many applications as we need. And it is quite Good because now we can start by write any other sub application from the Uber IO backend and we'll work together just just great. And this leads us to vending machine. If you already talked about uh, a little bit, and uh, it's like what is it? It's up for purchasing some blueberry goods, like, you know, cookies, mate, whatever, lunches, and so on. And you just you know, it started as a hackathon project. There was a Linux Phoenix uh, framework backend written on hackathon, and we have some Slack commands that you just grab something from the fridge, type the command in Slack, and it generates you a purchase on, on the backend. But uh, then we moved to like creating a UI for it, and that's the reason why the backend is not the most interesting thing here because the backend is quite simple. The most interesting here thing is here is, is the front end. Uh, because we have a task to create a React Native app which will run on some tablet device, which will hang somewhere around the fridge. You just grab something, you will log in, make a purchase, click OK, and then somewhere on the backend stores your purchases. But you know we we have logged in with something which like it's turned out that remembering four digits is way too hard because <laughs> I don't know four digits, you know. So it was an idea. Hey, we implement something like facial recognition. I was like, okay, 
Why not? But we haven't uh, like done it before, and we don't know how to do it. We just will make some research, and then we talk about it a lot more. And we divide it like the approach, the solution, the four steps. Like first one, we like we don't reinvent the wheel, so we have search for some like existing solution, and. The second step, we were pretty sure that the existing solution will be maybe too much or like too little. We need to adjust it to our use case. Then we need to integrate it into our like working backend with front end. And like the thing which I was like mostly curious about was the testing and fine tuning of this of this thing because we had never done it before, as I said. Well, uh, we were Googling a lot. Uh, there were many recommended solutions. And from some reason, we know that we need to integrate it with React Native App, so it would be nice, nice if it would be like Node.js React, but like the engine, the, the recognition core, like seems to need to be in some other technology because it's not like, slow. And we found some winner. From like I don't know what was the exact reason why we choose chose this one, but the winner was like face recognition JS, which is like Node.js wrapped C plus engine, which like takes care of the recognition and learning how the users should be recognized. But it seems like it was really good documentation. It's easy to use. It is easy to understand. And it's just like pretty much straightforward, so we decided to use it and just give it a try. And the only thing was that it was way too complicated. There were like a bunch of uh, extra functionality we didn't need, like you know, recognizing of many users at the same time and drawing on something. So in the front end, which it already has, we just needed like the, the algorithm for recognition of it. So we cut off like many of the functionality and like what we, the result of our cutting off was that we have something which if you provide uh, an image to it, it crop your face, it detects your face, it crop your face, then it's triangulate the pixels in that crop area find some like common common face landmarks, group them together, and to every group, it, or like pair with some class, and you just like, by learning, you pick the name to the class, like Onza, Izzy, and or, like whoever. So it's like, it has the learning engine with a, with a teacher. It provides classes and you say, hey, this is this one, this is that one, and it, that's it. And then you hit like the, the server with some with some image, it finds the probability of the triangulation, and hey, bang, it returns you the name of the user or the name of the class in general. And it was like fine, but we have discovered that we will need some collection of faces. So collection of face images for every user here in Blueberry. We will need some training server where we will like run the, the training every time the collection will grow. And when, like, we need some user interface to our vending cat. We done it like it wasn't that, that hard, but then came up to us the, the testing phase, and we realized it didn't work as we expected, obviously, <laughs> because like there were quite high error rates, like I don't know, ninety percent error rate, just like quite <laughs> quite high. <laughs> Like the first recognition times range from four to six seconds, but mostly from 10 to 20 seconds, which is quite a long time to wait in, in front of the fridge. <laughs> the next thing was that I crashed almost every second time recognition was triggered. So yeah, and some other like, like really, you know, device specific issues we didn't count with, but we solve it somehow because during the phase of the tuning of, of the training algorithm, 
we have played around with the values and we discovered that, okay, we need more face photos for each user. We need to increase the probability values for each user. We need to like really fine tune the threshold values for, for the landmarks because you have like different the distance between the eyes, you have different distance between the eyes and nose, you have different distance between ears. And uh, like there was an issue that if you have five guys uh, with the birds, you like make a quite like half of the face is, is like fuzzy for the algorithm. So we need to play like really fine with, with those values. But we find out some, some solution just like with trying to play with the values. And it turned out that it's working quite well till now. So hope we find, find a solution for it. To solve the, the recognition times, uh, we need to enhance the, the server power, of course, because it was running on some really shitty server and then it was like sharing the core with some other services we had. It wasn't quite like good approach. And uh, also because like uh, going through the, through, the, through the classes is done by some JavaScript and, uh, on client. And if you are going through, through the like few data, it's okay. But if you are using maps or such methods on a bunch of the data, it's quite slow. So we done some uh, JavaScript optimization as well in, in, in the client. And like, yeah, the other issues are connected with, uh, with uh, our like, bad approaches at, at the start because we have like wrong assumptions. Uh, we discovered that if we need more face photos for each user, we will need some, some like, web application for like giving the ability for users to, to upload more of their photos, to upload their photos directly from, the, from some web app. So they are not forced to like creating 20 images of my, of my like different faces and send it to some guy who will upload it to our Blueberry's uh, backend. So we create like the web app, which is in React, so it shares the code base with the React Native app. And uh, since we have the binding backend so with GraphQL, we, it was like in, in the start of this year, when on like March or like uh, release of the Apple client so 2.0. So we decided to use Apple client for, for state management instead of Redux or any other uh, like options. And it was like with, with the existing code in React Native and with the implementation of Apple client, it was quite smooth and easy to, to introduce this app. And we like, it starts as a web application for vending, for, but for now we are creating something which we call, I don't know, Blueberry Wallet or has a bunch of different names where it would be like the, the, the administration web for each member of the Blueberry for administrating all the other stuff which is going on there from the cookies to the, I don't know, parking, lunch, I don't know, like a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Sorry. And yeah, I and mean, all of this stuff is common taking we have push, uh, VB push messages with Google L backend. <clears throat> Let's move to some summary or overview. Uh, maybe I will give you an overview first because like, I was talking about many different services and uh, I wasn't talking about some of them because there's like, I can speak for hours. Uh, I haven't talked about parking backend. It's something which is now in, in, in the phase of development. You can have a look on, a, on an application and you can talk with Adam about it. Uh, Adam is here. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's like Node.js backend and it has it's struggled with some, with some issues from like leadership point of view and delivery point of view. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, it's still in progress. But we have the vending backend, which is connected to the Blueberry backend. We have the vending app, not only the, the front end one, but also the React Native one, like application itself. And the first recognition, which is like training on the Blueberry backend, recognition through vending app, a React Native app, and sending data through the vending backend to Blueberry backend. 
We have Team Cheat Sheet, which is directly connected to the Blueberry backend. We have Blueberry IO website, which like, obviously is directly connected to the Blueberry backend. And Blueberry carries, which were talk, Jirka talked uh, talk about, uh, which are also, it has some small Elixir Phoenix framework uh, backend, which is connected directly to the Blueberry backend. And there is also the, the planning poker backend, which is not anyhow connected to Blueberry backend, but you can have a look on the, on the uh, planning poker application in the foyer. And uh, Nico, after me, will have a talk about developing the front end for it in recent React. And let's move to some lessons we've learned from last year and three months, two months, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, like we don't do backends for clients. We did not in the last two years, but three years maybe. But uh, we discovered a lot of it because it's like pleasure to write something which is working. <laughs> and yeah, it's like quite obvious. Uh, and you maybe know it from some, if you were to rack your own directive, that the Apple client is a great alternative for state management. But it really is. If you're a GraphQL server, it's a right, really great alternative. And like the most obvious thing is that, okay, face recognition is a tough task and it still doesn't work like 100% and you can still cheat it with the photor or anything. We are not sending, sending yawns to your face it's just or photons. It's just like still just recognition based on the image. But we have learned other lessons as well. Like from my experience, internal project will be always shit if you are not working on it. Like from outer space and the universe is really small. Uh, universal developing of internal projects, but you can like learn really a lot. You can learn, you can try different technologies, different approaches. You can try different, if not, but not even like the, the technologies or approaches. You can also try different like type of uh, workspaces. Not using Scrum, not using Jira, not using Slack. You can like try something else some different type of scrum, some different agile approaches. You can try whatever you want. If you have clear vision, if you have a clear idea, uh, and you can like discuss it with your tech leads, or not tech leads, like project leads or whatever. It's absolutely fine, and you can learn, like in one year, you can learn something you will run on client project for several years. But you need a strong concept, and you need a leadership which is taken to control because developers are most of the time like quite not that focused on some vision as <coughs> you will need to. That's it folks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>